Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about stents and some of the problems, the cascade effect problems that occur when you get a stent. Uh, originally they used angioplasty, which is a, a procedure where they're putting a balloon to uh, kind of mash the plaque and create more space in your arteries. Uh, the problem is you get a condition called restenosis, which is regrowing some of the tissue um, back. So um, that's not good. So then they developed something called a stent, which is a metal mesh that goes in the arteries and holds up the arteries to create more space. Well, the problem is it still created this, this regrowing of tissue, but not as much, but still it was too high. So then they added some drugs to the stent called a drug eluding stent, and that helped a little bit, but it gave another side effect, which is thrombosis, which is clotting. And then they had to come up with another solution to fix that, which is dual antiplatelet therapy, okay? The problem is once you get off this, we still have complications of the heart, more problems. So some doctors are just deciding to leave people on this therapy indefinitely, okay? The problem with that is that your risk for bleeding increases. So let's say, for example, you have to get a surgery. Well, that's a problem because you're not going to be able to clot. If they cut you open, you can bleed to death. Or let's say you get in a car accident and you have this internal bleeding. You basically bleed to death, so it puts you at risk. Okay. So I see that uh, there's a need for stents in certain situations, um, but they are overused. I'm going to put some links down below just to, if you're considering getting a stent, you just need to know all, all the facts on this. So here's the big problem. This is not just a plumbing problem, okay? This is not just you eating too much cholesterol, plugging up your arteries. There always is an originating lesion or damaged artery that starts the cascade effect in the first place where there's inflammation. This is the originator right here. You have this inflamed artery, okay? Then the body comes in to heal it with cholesterol and calcium and protein as its band-aid. In the presence of a nutrient deficiency, this is accelerated. So if you're low in vitamin E, vitamin C, certain B vitamins, and other nutrients, this process is accelerated because these nutrients actually protect against oxidation or damage from inflammation. And what's really behind the inflammation in most cases is high levels of insulin because the person is consuming too many carbohydrates. Not too much fat, but too much sugar and other things that fall into the carbohydrate family. The other problem is low vitamin K2. If you don't know about K2, I'm going to put a link down below. Vitamin K2 is an amazing nutrient that helps keep the calcium out of the arteries. The problem is the source of vitamin K2 is from fatty foods. So if you're getting the recommendations to lower your fat content, then that depletes the vitamin K2. Not to mention being put on a statin for high cholesterol has a side effect of increasing insulin resistance and increasing more insulin, okay? That's gonna worsen the situation. So here we are trying to solve a problem, but it gives you another problem. Not to mention, you may be put on Coumadin, which is a medication to thin the blood, and it blocks vitamin K1. So this means you can't consume leafy greens, the very food that would give you a lot of these nutrients. So basically, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because it's hard to get these nutrients in a natural good form, a whole food form. It's hard to keep insulin down because you're not getting the correct diet, so you never end up treating the root problem. You're stuck in this uh, patch-up mode, unfortunately. So if you're confused, if I just confused you, I highly recommend doing some research, your own research, on the relationship between arteries and insulin. Okay, That would be a good place to start. And inflammation of the arteries and how insulin can affect that. Also vitamin K2. And I also recommend you get on a healthy ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. That can actually be a game changer for you. So you have a chance of, of minimizing the real cause of this problem. So despite whether you have a stent or not, we, what we wanna do is we wanna prevent another problem. 
All right, so thanks for watching, and I hope I at least increase your awareness on some other areas that you might want to dive into doing your own research. All right, see you later. Hey guys, I'm not sure if you have my app yet, Dr. Berg app, it's totally free. You should download it. Okay, this is what it looks like. You click it, it gives you all sorts of great resources. I have all my YouTube videos on this app. Okay, and it's regularly um, uploading the most recent ones. All the YouTube videos are also converted to audio versions, okay? So you can use it when you're walking, exercising, driving your car. I have a mini course on there. I'll be putting additional courses. I have a lot of recipes on there, and this is new, and also PDF resources. So there's various downloads, PDFs that you can get as well. And if you wouldn't mind, after you download it, check it out. Give me your unbiased review and tell me how you like it. I wanna know.